to another episode. Today we're in the stunning backdrop of Mid Wales and we're installing a 20 kilowatt solar edge system onto this chicken shed. So what's interesting about this project is two things. So this chicken shed behind me is owned by ex-Wales international rugby player Dan Lydia. We're doing 10 kilowatts on one side, 10 kilowatts on another side. It's got a dual phase supply, so it's got L1 and L2. It's also got a backup generator tucked away around the side with an automatic transfer switch. So what's fundamental about this project is, if there's a power cut, the chickens inside the chicken shed have probably only got about half an hour before they're dead. And that's just because of the buildup of carbon dioxide in the shed. So those fans need to be circulating all the time, hence there being a generator on site for backup. We need to ensure that the solar is being installed parallel with the grid, not on the supply side of the generator. Otherwise we can have issues on backfeeding the generator. So yeah, quite an interesting job today. It's eight o'clock. I've been driving for about two and a half hours now. It's absolutely Baltic. Let's get into it. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, okay. What's your name, sorry? Lynn. Okay. Ah, yeah, I think I met Jack last week. No, that's grand, that, thank you. Well, yeah, that's great, thank you. Most of the equipment's in now. Um, I've got my brew, which is the important thing. This back wall over here, is where I'm planning on mounting all this equipment. So I'm going to throw an OSB. No, I'm not, I'm going to put a ply board back onto the wall and then a fire board. Obviously the ply just gives us something to screw to, a little bit of strength. What we've got here is the dual supply, L1 and L2. Feeds an upfront MCCB. That then goes off to an ATS. There's also a second supply that goes over to an RCD unit, which powers just a, a waste belt for the chicken poop. So the setup of this system, because we've got L1 and L2, we've not got the three phase setup. We're going for two single phase inverters. So there's a 10 kilowatt inverter single phase for each orientation of the roof. That'll have its own isolator meter. And obviously the DC strings will then come into each one of those inverters. Quite a lot of work to do. Matt's already left behind on another job. He was supposed to be with us today, but the snow caught us off. So he's still finishing off a job up in Manchester. That's another solar edge system. A lot on the go. I'm going to get the board cut, get that to the wall, and go from there. So as with all of the jobs, and I think I've mentioned this on previous videos as well, part of what we need to do is ensure that the layout is thought through. So we're not just rushing into it and screwing things straight into the wall. So taking a little bit of time just to consider where things are being laid out, how things will look. It'll pay dividends in the end. Just take a little bit of time to start with. But what I'm thinking is one inverter here, one inverter there, a bit of trunking underneath with the isolators and meters. And obviously we're gonna put a new board on this wall from the supply. If I can get the trunk in to match around, ideal, but I'm not too sure because of the height of the meter. So I'm gonna take a few minutes, figure this out, and then I can get the board on the wall.
day two on site. Um, not an awful lot of filming happened yesterday because I was far too busy in there. Trying to get everything organized and planned out. Um, most of the work electrically is done. I need to probably come back and swap the fuses. So we've got MCBs instead of RCBOs and obviously on a TT system. So our ZSs aren't gonna comply on, um, just in general really are they? So I need to put some RCDs in, RCBOs in. I need to clip up, label up. So I think that's the plan for this morning. I've already put a hole out to the outside. DCs are already strung, so I just need to get that cable trayed and brought in. And it's about minus four degrees and absolutely Baltic. So I think the first thing we need to do is get the kettle on and get ourselves a brew. So the last few hours have been mildly, mild, mildly horrendous. So, oh, that sums it up. So we've had a busy couple of hours. I've managed to get the RCBOs we needed to swap the MCBs, because obviously this is a TT system, so we need 30 milliamp RCD protection. Uh, trying to get hold of fuse box, 50 amp, bi-directional, 10ka RCBOs is a nightmare. Anyway, that's all done, so I need to get those swapped over. The DC strings are through, all cable trays on the roof. I spent far too long trying to make a double 45 offset on, on the tray. Yeah, far too long, it needn't take that long. However, it did. Last few things left to do, and then tidy up, because this is a pickle. I'm gonna have a brew and a square bar, which I liberated from breakfast. Back in a minute. We're back on site. Evidently, the lads that were doing the roof couldn't plug the MT4s in and test it. So I'm gonna test the strings quickly, get them fired up, see if we can get this commissioned. We've already commissioned the AC side. I'm gonna crack on with that. And hopefully, we can get it working. There's not a lot of sun out today, but hopefully it does fire up. So I have checked polarity on all of these strings. I'm just gonna re-terminate them. I do like to have labels on with a heat shrink. So we can just mark it with a bit of colored tape. I really do like to have the labels on. It just looks a little bit neater. So once we're pairing, I'll just heat shrink that on with a, the heat gun. Obviously one of the beauties of Solar Edge is to save one volt per panel. So if we look here, we've got a string completely live coming in off the roof, but it's safe to touch, so I can touch both ends of that. We'll just check for voltage. And as you can see there, we've got 15 volts. So there's 15 panels on this string, one volt per panel. So I know that, that string is correct. Polarity is the right way round which is always really helpful. The idea of Solar Edge being that in the event of a fault or an issue, it'll restrict itself down to one volt per panel. Obviously that's safe to touch. And that will only become live um, once connected to the inverter and the inverter gives it the okay to, to start generating really. With Solar Edge, they recommend not to install DC isolators. So you can see that there's no external DC isolators. We have got the red toggle switch underneath, which is a DC isolation point. And so let's recommend that just so they can continue to monitor the system and the array and communicate with the optimizers. There is also a document, I think it was published by Bree, that says the biggest cause of commercial solar fires is poorly terminated DC isolators. And where possible, we should be looking at designing them out of a system anyway. 
that is just another high resistance joint that is prone to failure, arcing, burnout, and obviously fires. So if we can minimize the amount of high resistance joints on that DC circuit, for me, it's a lot safer. And obviously we want to listen to the manufacturer's recommendations as well. Just pairing the optimizers now. So we've got two minutes whilst that goes round. Hopefully that finds everything and then we can leave site. Just pairing um, the optimizers. So we've got about 30 seconds left or so. This is just gonna go round and ping every single optimizer. So there should be 15 a string, four strings, six optimizers. So that might take five, 10 minutes just to communicate and pair with them. 